good morning, everybody. Welcome this morning. We're excited to have Bob Lentz and his team, the Dignity Revolution, with us today. And really, if, if, if you look around our school, the door when you come in, the signs in the commons area, um, our goal this year is to really have a dignity revolution here. We heard Bob speak. Most of you, I believe all of you heard Bob or AJ speak last year about value, courage, respect. And this summer, when we started looking at things that are facing you guys and facing youth across the country, we realized it really came down to those, those three things that are at the root and the core of everything else. That uh, we have to start realizing, when I say we, I mean us too, as adults, have to realize that every person has value. We have to have the courage to stand up to do the right thing. And that we have to realize everyone deserves respect, including ourselves, because sometimes we don't respect ourselves every time. And so that's what we're going to push this year in school. We hope that you will buy into this because we really, in order to make a change in our school, in ourselves, in our communities, you have to buy into some of these things. Because the reality is, is that society has sold us all lies, right? Do we have to be a certain way? We have to look this way, we have to act this way. If I don't wear these clothes, if I don't look this way, I'm not important, I don't matter. That's a lie. I have to put up this false image on social media so everybody likes me, so I can get all these likes. That's a lie too. And what we do is we start pretending to be somebody we're not. And we pretend that we aren't going through things that we are. And we start pushing things down and we don't share it with people. We keep it quiet and instead we hide behind a screen and we send messages to our friends saying, I'm okay and you're not. It's time that we start getting back to maybe some of the basics of having a conversation with a friend and being there for people when they need it. And I know that may seem weird to some people, but I think if you try it, it won't be so weird after all. And so those are the things that we need to try to get away from and we need to start investing in people more and realizing that it's, it's okay to not be okay sometimes. Everybody goes through things. You're gonna go through things the rest of your life. You better get used to it. And the things you're going through right now are gonna seem pretty minor when you get older. Just ask some of your teachers, right? Um, there's gonna be things you're gonna go through later in life that are gonna seem a whole lot worse than this. And it may not seem that way right now, but trust me, that's the way it works. So Bob's here today to talk to us about a few different things. It's gonna be a different message um, than last year, but it's still going to tie in the value, courage, and respect that every person deserves, and I believe that we're going to be one of the first school districts in the United States of America to have a true dignity revolution, and I believe you guys are going to help us do that. So today we have Bob Lentz back with us again this year. As you remember last year, he was a, he's a youth speaker, he's an author, he's spoken in every, all 50 states. He's been in several countries worldwide, he's spoken to over 6 million people with his message of the dignity revolution. He founded Life Promotions, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, he recently published a new book called uh, Dignity Revolution, Standing Up for the Value of Every Person. Bob is going to share how to live life to the fullest and how to impact others. And today was made possible by Faith Technologies, by the Hitchcock Tulare School Foundation, by Sisters in Spirit, and then the Hitchcock Tulare School too. And Bob brought with him today uh, one of his uh, good friends, Tom Coverley. So let's let's watch Tom. Warning: The show you are about to see results in laughing so hard that tears will run down your leg and minds will be blown to pieces. <laughs> if your brain can't handle the awesomeness you are about to witness, or you hate to laugh, please leave now. We ask that all cell phones be put away during the show. If not, security will confiscate your phone, and Tom Coverley will be happy to display your photos on the video screen for everyone's entertainment. The Illusionist is one of the most requested motivational entertainers in the world. 
Nearly three million people have seen his comedy magic show live. He has been seen on TV and has entertained numerous celebrities, including Jeff and Jessica Robertson of Duck Dynasty, Nickelodeon TV star Amber Montana, Rick the Reptile Guy of the a &E TV show Wild Transport, as well as the entire cast of the Batman vs. Superman movie. Tom has performed for many of the largest corporations in the world, such as Warner Brothers, Amway, and Salvation Army, just to name a few. He has also shared the stage with America's biggest music acts like Toby Mac, Newsboys, Skillet, Brian Head Welch of Corn, Thompson Square, For King and Country, Pop Evil, Colton Dixon, and Danny Gokey of American Idol, NF, and many more. It's showtime. Would you please count down with me? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please get started. Get started. Get started. Is my mic on? Sorry. Is it my fault? Nope. There we go. One, one, one. Everybody hear me? Yeah. Good. I know it's morning, so we're going to have everybody wake up. I want you to imagine I just came out here. I just did the most amazing trick you've ever seen. I want to hear what you're going to sound like after every trick, okay? So listen, guys, if you were doing this, this is no longer cool. You're only cool when you're using your clappers, okay? So let's pretend that I just came out here, blew you away with a trick. I want to hear what you're going to sound like after every trick. You ready? Go. Some of you forgot how to clap, that's okay. You'll make great volunteers later on, so it'll be perfect. Well, let's get started. A lot of people think as a magician that somehow I pick volunteers ahead of time. I never pick a volunteer ahead of time, and the reason is if I do that, someone would assume that somehow they're in on the trick. So to avoid that, this is what I came up with. To pick volunteers at random by throwing bricks into the crowd. <laughs> That'd be wrong, but let's do it anyway, all right? Here we go. Oh! Just kidding, man. <laughs> Dude, you all right? You just, like, wet your pants, man. It's all good. You know what's great? You didn't even try to save this girl. You, like, go right underneath the bleachers, man. It's all right. Listen, the brick is squishy. Kind of like the stuff in your drawers right now, all right? Hey, listen, it's all right. What's your name? What is it? Colin, here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you pick my next volunteer. So I'm going to have you stand on your feet, and I want you to throw the brick anywhere you want. Just avoid the aisle, okay? You ready? Go ahead. Don't look. Look at me. Throw it back. No, look this way so you can't throw it at someone specifically. You ready? Go ahead and pick someone. Back. Everybody give him a hand. Thanks a lot. What's your name? What is it? Briar. Briar. Nice to meet you, Briar. Briar, I want you to... Uh, name a number between 1 and 100, make it a two-digit number, name it out loud, go. 50. 50. Is there a reason why you said 50? <laughs> it's just a number. <laughs> Everybody give him a hand because he's going to help me on stage right here. I'm going to tell you why. Come on up here. <laughs> Come on up this way. I'm going to be standing right there. I want you to hold out your left hand if you would. And what's your name, Briar? Mm -hmm. Perfect. I want you to hold it right there. Now, listen, I brought some money along. Now, don't get excited. It's not $50, but it is some change. Is that the number you said, 50? Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why you said that? No. Just thought of that. All right. I want you to hold that right there. I'm going to show you. There's nothing in my hand right here. I'm going to reach into my pocket, and I'm going to grab some change out. Now, I don't want you to count it just yet. Don't be a peeker. Don't you peek. Don't look at me like that. You look so serious. Like you're going to hug me or something, Briar. Don't do that, all right? So, Briar, hold on to that. Listen, I'm going to show you. There is no other money in my pocket. You could have said anything. And he said what? 50. 50. How amazing would it be by round of applause if that happens to be 50 cents in his hand? Come on.
Tinkle, would that be amazing? <laughs> yeah, it would, it would. All right, perfect. So let's come on over here. Thanks, Tinks. Um, and so, Briar, in a moment, you're going to count it out loud, all right? And I want you to count it one point at a time. Start with the, the bigger coin, all right? And then go ahead and count from there. Are you ready? And if it's 50 cents, it'd be pretty amazing. If it's not 50 cents, and it's all his fault for picking the wrong number in my pocket. <laughs> one of these days, this is going to work. Seriously, before every show, I take some money, I put it in my pocket. Let's hope today is the day. You ready? Here we go. Remember, I didn't pick you. I threw the brick into the crowd. Dude, you had an accident. <laughs> I said, throw the brick really far. You went like two rows back. Good job, all right? And so now we got Briar up here. Briar, you could have said anything. You said 50. Briar, count it out loud. Nice and loud. Nice and loud. Right here. 25. Yep, 25. yep. Spit on me when you do that, too. That's good. <laughs> That's good. So 40, yep. 50. 50 cents exactly, everybody give Briar a hand. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. One more hand for Briar, everybody. <laughs> good job, man. Good job. Thanks for being a good sport. All right, so I need another volunteer. I'm looking for a lady to help me out with this. I'm looking for a young lady to help me out. Who wants to help out? I need, um, let's come on over here. No, you were here last night, so you, you, gotta, you gotta do this. You didn't tell your friends, did you? All right, perfect. Um, come on up here and help me out. Everybody give her a hand as she walks all of you up here. I'm going to have Ashley stand right there. What's your name? Lady. And what grade are you in? Seventh grade. Perfect. Well, I have a book here, and I want you to verify for everyone out there that the book is different, okay? Because a lot of people think as a magician, somehow I would use a trick book. So you're going to verify since you're going to be the eyes for everybody out there to tell them. Go ahead and look through the pages. Make sure it's not repeat pages or anything like that, Then it's all legit. Yes? We'll wait while you read. <laughs> Does that look good? That is perfect. Well, in a moment, I'm going to ask for you to turn to a page. Let's say that you turn to page 92. When you turn to that page, I want you to give me the page number. Because then I'm going to attempt to tell you word for word what is on that page. Everybody say, that's good. That's good. It is good. Because there's hundreds of pages in this book. And you're going to quiz me, okay? Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret how I do this. I memorized every single word in the book. Everybody said, that's really good. Yeah. It is, because there's hundreds of pages in the book. So that I can't see it, we're going to go back to back, okay? Because if you were to hold it right there, you're a little bit shorter than I am, so there's a chance I can, like, see those words. So we can't see that. Let's go back to back, all right? So come on over here. We can go back to back, shoulder blade to shoulder blade. Sort of. <laughs> that is great. All right. Just press your shoulder blades against my back, okay? As long as they're touching my back, if I was to do this, would you feel that? Yes. If I did this, would you feel that? Then you'll know I'm trying to cheat, okay, and look at the book. So start in the beginning of the book, somewhere between the very beginning and up to page 25, and we'll kind of work our way through the book. Let's start in the beginning, get me warmed up. Since it's bright and early in the morning, my brain don't work well. All right. What page are you on? What's that? 16. On 16. Now, let me try to remember. Again, it's nice and early in the morning. And why schools don't start at 11 o'clock, I don't get it. Um, they should. And anybody morning people? What's wrong with you, kids? <laughs> How many of you don't like mornings? You're my people. I love it. All right. So, what page are you on? On 16, I'm going to try to remember. My brain seriously don't work in the morning, but I think it says, let me see. Is that right? Uh -huh. Come on, everybody, make some noise. Uh -huh. It says, let me see. Holy Tom, born in New Jersey in the year 1857. No, 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 correction. 1858? Yes. Yes, come on. I want you to go to the next page. I want you to name one word on there, and I'll try to tell you what the rest of the sentence says. Now, if I remember right, there are very, like, some of those paragraphs are, like, even just a few words on there, right? All right, so go ahead and name one of the paragraphs. Photograph. Photograph. Does it say my photograph? No. What page are you on? 
on 17. And it says, it starts with the word photograph? Oh, it doesn't start with it. All right, that, that's the wrong one then. So you went down a couple more. The one where it says, we were both in the photograph? Come on. Oh dear, that is very bad. Your majesty has indeed committed an indiscretion. Did I get that right? Come on, everybody. Let me see. Did I get that all right? Every single word, because usually I get one wrong. So let, let's go a little deeper into the book. Do you want that page, that page, that one, that one? Like, which page do you want? <laughs> um, that one there, that is perfect. And they're laughing because they know that I'm looking at the book, and you're probably assuming that's how I do this, right? That I'm looking at memorizing it really fast. All right, so, yeah, you're smart. Um, so, 70, what page do you want? This one or that one? 77, and what paragraph do you want? Like that one or that one? They're both long, so let's go with the first one, all right? Now, there's no way I can memorize it that fast, all right? So let's turn around, let's do this some more, okay? All right, all right. Actually, let, let's do something a little different, because I, I did memorize this, so here. Um, you you want to do, like, this one's pretty long. Which one do you want? That page, that page? You want that one. All right, what, that one? Perfect, let's do that one. You're doing great, all right. Because that one's even longer. There's no way I can memorize it that fast. Does this say the window? Yes. Now, you know that because I turned around and I saw the window. So they're not even going to clap for that. But watch this. I'm going to say the windows. The lamps have been lit, but the blinds have not been drawn so that I could see Holmes as he laid upon the couch. I do not know whether he was seized with compunction at that moment. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Come on, everybody. Amazing stuff. You have any idea how this is done? No, no idea. All right. So let's go more, like what page do you want there? That one or that one? That one, and there's a few paragraphs, so which one do you want? The first one? Well, that's easy for me to memorize. It's only one sentence. That one there? All right, let's turn around and let's try that. You're doing great so far. Good job. <laughs> what page are you on? On 44. Sometimes this only takes a minute, but not today. All right. What paragraph do you want there? The second paragraph where it says, well, I followed you at the door and so made sure that I was really an object of interest to the celebrated Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Did I get that right? Correct. And then it goes on. It says, then I'd rather be imprudently wished you good night and started for the temple to see my husband. Correct. Awesome. I am amazing. <laughs> you even say correct so angry. Like you can't like, right? Oh, yeah. Give her hand, everybody. I want you to see something. Is there anything different about my book? It's blank. It's blank. Every single word is blank in the book from the beginning to the end. Everybody give her a hand for helping out. Good job. Now the reason I do that trick because I want you to see how easy it is to be fooled and deceived, yes? It's easy to be fooled and deceived. Now don't feel bad, people were not laughing at you. They were laughing because they saw me take a duplicate book right off the table. And then every time I turned around, I was pointing at the pages right in front of you and you never even caught it. We, I even tapped you on the back with it. I waved it in front of your face. But you don't have to feel bad because you weren't the only one deceived. I was able to fool and deceive everyone else in this room as well. And our speaker later on, he's going to talk about just some of those things that we believe about life. Um, and so he's going to be out here shortly. Would you guys like to see one more? Yeah! All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I need someone that has a quarter, 25 cents. Anybody have a quarter, 25 cents? 25 cents. I have some toys, but I'd rather borrow one. If anybody has a quarter. Anybody, you have a dollar. That will work for this. You have a quarter. Come on. Do me a favor. I need a girl to help me out on this part. So will you hand it to any girl in the room? Hand it to Mason. Danielle. <laughs> Perfect. She's so thankful. Come on up here. Everybody give her a hand. I'm going to have you stand right there. And what's your name? Ashley. That is my daughter's name. Ashley, what I want you to do is take this and I want you to put a giant A for Ashley. And on the other side, put any shape that you want. While you're doing that, I'm looking for another volunteer. I need the strongest dude in this school. Where's he at? Where's the strongest dude? Here, man. Get up here. Come on. 
Come on up. What's your name? What is it? Tevin? I just stuck with a name like Tom and you get a cool name like Tevin? Tevin the Illusionist sounds way better than Tom the Illusionist. So you're you're the strong guy. We're gonna call you Hercules today though. <laughs> <laughs> So you stay there, Hercules. And over here, Ashley has a quarter, and she wrote her initial on the one side, and she did a shape on the other. I want you to show Hercules your quarter. Will you recognize that again when you see it later on, Hercules? Yes. And there's a heart on that side, and you'll recognize that. Now listen, we know you're strong, but we don't know about the eyes. Show him a little closer in case his eyes hurt, okay? Don't pick his nose with it, all right? Just go on over there, Ashley. You stay right there. I have a soda can that I asked the superintendent to grab, and I want you to make sure that it's never been opened before. Has it ever been opened? No, and is there liquid inside? How do you know? Dude, don't do that. <laughs> I'm about to open it up, and thanks to you, we're going to have an explosion, all right? So you go over there. You scare me for now, all right? And I'll get back to you in a moment. And Ashley, I want you to tell everybody out there, yes or no, has this ever been open? No. No. And Ashley, look at this side. Yes or no, ever been open? No. And look at all the sides, Ashley. Yes or no, any holes or anything in the sides of the can? No. Ashley, I'm going to take that quarter in my hand for the very first time, and I want you to watch closely, okay? I'm not wearing any sleeves. I want you to pay attention to every move. There's not another quarter in the entire world that looks like that. There's an A on that side, there's a heart on that side. This trick that I'm about to do for you, Tinkle, <laughs> is one that I performed all over the world. It's the most requested trick that I get asked to do. Now, I was taught this by a magician that you probably never heard of before because he's not really famous, um, but his name is Chris Angel. Have you guys heard of Chris Angel? All right, just don't clap for him because he's not invited to your school, all right? So we're going to move on. You guys ready for this? Maybe you saw him do this on TV. Now you get to see it live and in person. Here we go. That's still the same quarter. Hercules, still the same quarter. Ready, everybody? Say one. One. It's morning. You're a little delayed on that. You ready? Everybody say one. One. There we go. Everybody say two. Two. Everybody say three. Three. Nothing in that hand, nothing in that hand. Yes or no, has it ever been opened? No. Ashley, I want you to look at that side, right where I slammed it in the bottom of the can. Look closely there. Has it ever been opened? No. Ashley, come a little closer to me. Nothing in my hand and nothing on the sides of the can. So Ashley, I want you to li listen to this. I'm gonna put it up next to your ear and tell me if you hear anything hitting the bottom of the can. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what I thought the first time I saw it. You ready? Everybody, that's your fault, dude. <laughs> There's liquid inside. Shake, shake, shake. Right. Go ahead and hold on to that. Listen, come on over here. Is there any quarters hidden in my skin? Go ahead and check. Go ahead and check. Dude, it's not possible. All right, you're good. Go ahead and check under the watch. Go ahead and check. Yep, use your hands, bro. All right, there, there you go. Go ahead and check under there. Perfect. Nothing there. Listen, do as I do. You ready? Cheer him on. You're about to see his dance moves. Here we go. That was pretty good. A little delayed, but it was pretty good. Do as I do. You ready? Why do you look disgusting at this time? Ready, go ahead. Perfect. Turn this way. Stay. Don't you move. <laughs> Give him a hand, everybody. Come on. Stop, 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 stop. This is South Dakota. I know you guys like your paper like this. Come on, over the top. How many like your paper over the top? I know that. I know that. Let's clean that up. Don't step in that. That's not soda. He got nervous. He... <laughs> Tinkle, what are you laughing at? You did the same thing you're like. Here, you need, you need this. I know you do. Come on. The brick scared you. All right. So you stay right there. Ashley, let's get to you. I got this glass over here. Ashley, put that can in your left hand if you would. And hold it up as high as you can over top of the glass. 
Ashley, face everyone out there. I want you to pour it right into the glass from way up there. Or all over my hand is fine too, Ashley. Most people stop right away when they miss. Not you, no, no, no. Ashley, do you pour your own drinks at home? Yeah. You do? No. You shouldn't ever again. You should always ask your family for help. All right, go ahead, Ashley. No, you can come down this time. I learned my lesson. That is great. Keep going, keep going. Look, you're not even waiting for the fist to go down. Are you ready? Turn the can around, give it a good shake in the microphone, and listen to the applause, everyone out there. Now, Ashley, there's only one way to get the quarter out of there. The quarter is way too big to fit through that little opening at the top. I've had people all day long try to get it out. The only way to get it out is to have someone strong come up here and rip it open. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> Don't you worry, I'm still looking for someone. Um, I'm kidding, it's you, Hercules, come here. All right, I don't wanna to touch the can, so you grab the can, Hercules, and face everyone out there. And Hercules, I want you to hold it sideways. Now listen, we know you're strong, but you will get cut if you put your fingers in the middle, all right? So don't get cut, keep your fingers on the outside, and you're gonna go back and forth, keep the quarter inside. They're gonna cheer for you, Hercules, as you do. Cheer this guy on, come on. Yep, the instructions of keeping the quarter inside went out the window. All right. Go ahead and put it back inside. Act like no one saw that. That came out of there, yes? All right, perfect. So the quarter is inside the can. Good job, Hercules. I want you to hold out your hands like this. He's going to pour the quarter in your hand when he does. There's going to be some soda good on your hands, Ashley. That's called revenge, okay? That is great. Go ahead and pour that in her hand. Yep, drip, drip, drip. That is great. Lay it on the ground. Thank you. Both of you come close together, look at both sides of that quarter. And tell everybody out there, nice and loud, yes or no, is it the same quarter? Yep. It is! Everybody give these two a hand! Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for being a good sport. Thanks for being a good sport. You guys have a good time? Yeah! Perfect. Well, here's what we're going to do. I want to introduce someone to you. And I'm telling you guys, you're absolutely going to love this speaker. Some of you got to hear him last year, and he's got some other things he wants to share with you this morning. I share the stage with a lot of people, and I've entertained a lot of celebrities. I'm telling you, the speaker that you're about to hear, you guys are going to love his heart. You're going to love his passion. I believe he is absolutely one of the best speakers on the entire planet. Will you please welcome my friend to the stage, Mr. Bob Lenz, everybody. Last night, and uh, Tom did a couple pieces last night, and it was good to laugh. But I could feel in the audience some people going, "Did not, did nobody tell Tom what just happened here? Doesn't he just know that we lost Caden right before school started?" And then you're like. I don't know if you've been here at all, but then you almost feel guilty for laughing because like, how do I still have a good time? What do I do? I just want you to, to know this. Um, I lost my brother to suicide a year and a half ago. And I still hurt and I still have a big hole in my stomach, and my life will always be, the, be, the, be different. But I heard something in my brain that said, that pain might not go away, but it doesn't have to steal that joy that surrounds you or deter you from your mission in life. And I'm here today, if I, wanna, if I could do one thing, I want to give you permission to laugh. I want to give you permission to smile. But I also want to give you permission to cry. I want to give you permission to, to be sad. But you know, we can't compare to one another, can we? 
I don't know if you've done that at all. Like, why is so and so crying? They hardly even knew him. And you start doing all this instead of saying, I just want to deal with what's going on inside of me. My counselor told me this, Bob, being miserable is not grieving. Does that make sense? Being miserable is not grieving. Being miserable is getting stuck. Grieving is facing any emotion that comes from laughter to tears to anger, walking through it and going on, because you'll have all of them. So I just have a few words before I even start to talk I want to give. Number one, I want to say this. Be kind to yourself. That's okay just to be right where you're at, no matter what. And, and let me tell you this. I, I talked to King's mom and dad, and, and I talked to the family, and, and they said, if you'd want anything, you'd want us to say, let's, let's fight. Let's keep going. Let's keep going on. And so what we need to do is not just to be kind, but what we need to do is this. Understand that what happened is not your fault. My brother was a pastor. My brother wrote a booklet against suicide. My brother impacted thousands. His, his funeral was seen by, in 10 countries by 22,000 people. He was one of the happiest guys I knew. Like, he was a dork, right? But I'm sorry he was. But something that happened, like, like you're like, I don't understand about all that goes on with depression or anxiety. But then you even know that, well, there wasn't, there, he wasn't even that kind of person. There's something called episodical depression and anxiety that just comes on. But we need to know that it's okay to deal with it. But you know what? If my brother died of cancer, would I be embarrassed about that? Would I think it was my fault? No. But we don't understand, like if I have, I have a cold this morning, and I'm sorry, I, I needed some Kleenex, but I, I couldn't find any Kleenex, so I had to take some of your toilet paper, um, and I got it out of your locker room. <laughs> okay, I just gotta say something. I know locker rooms don't always smell like aftershave lotion, but I almost threw up. <laughs> God! Like, either you guys are the hardest working football team in the world, but I'm like, they have, they have spray. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know what? I have, I have a cold this morning, but I'm not embarrassed to say I have a cold, but we still don't understand when anxiety or depression hits. We still don't talk about it. Please, if I can say anything is this, it's not your fault what happened. Be kind to yourself, but also this. Be patient with the healing process. It's been a year and a half for me. It's only been a month for you. And you're all at different levels, right? From family members to, to friends to people who knew them. It affects us all. Don't compare to each other, but know that it's a process. And it'll never be healed. I, don't, I, I almost want to change that because it's not going to be healed because it's not coming back. But we don't have to forget the memories. And we don't have to remember, we don't have to forget the good times. And we can learn from them and be stronger and more resilient and say it's okay to talk and go on. But then we also need to do this. Get in a support group for counseling, to be honest. When I first started counseling, like it's going to a doctor. Would any of you be embarrassed to say you're going to a doctor? No, right? I just found out my brother-in-law has stage four uh, lung cancer, right? He's not embarrassed. But when I first started counseling, I was still so embarrassed. I'm like, well, it was, it was my brother. It was not me. Why do I have to go? And, and I'm okay. But you got to talk about it. See what I start calling? I said I went to see my coach. You know, people have fitness coaches, and I, I have a, a coach. Guys, I still see a counselor. Now, if you're not in that point, maybe a support group, but at least be able to talk about it. That's okay to talk. But then one more is this. Allow people to help, but know that some things will not help. Right? When I came yesterday and today, I, I, do you ever feel like I don't know what to say? Right? You, you don't know what to say. You know what the best thing to say sometimes is? Nothing. Nothing. My dad said, Bob, there's a reason you have two ears and one mouth. You should listen twice as much as you talk. Really, my dad just said, shut up and listen. 
But I think that's what he means. But I don't know about you, but I also guess I want to say, have a little bit of forgiveness, because some people will say some dumb things. Like one person said this to me, well, maybe it's a good brother, good thing that your brother did that. Because if he was suffering, maybe this is the best way. So I hit him. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Actually, because I promote dignity, I had to go like this. Thank you. <laughs> and inside my head I'm going, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but he was trying. He was trying, but not everything helped. But what we want to talk about today is that dignity revolution. That every life has value. That's why it hurts. That's why we're struggling. But we can't give up. It happened to it, but we don't have to let what happened define us. We can continue to go on. Now, I know it's been a whole year, but um, I, I want to review what we talked about last year. Right? It's all over your school, so you should. I had a $5 bill, <laughs> one of yours, and I ripped it up. And I said, no matter what has happened to you, just like this $5 bill has not lost its value. <laughs> Way to go. All right, number two. And then I talked about a little rabbit taking on a dog and said that no matter what, we need to have courage. courage. And then because why? Those little ones that are watching behind us. And then number three, I talked about my brother Tim last time. And I'm going to talk about another person today. But I talked about Tim and said he was handicapped in a wheelchair and said, no matter what, no matter how different somebody is, everybody deserves respect. respect. So just one last time, the word value starts with? Me. The word courage starts with? C. And the word respect starts with? R. And if you put it together, you get a? B C R. And that's? Oh. Old Stewart, but give yourself a round of applause. All right. And, uh, I did this last second. How many of you still have a VCR in your home? <laughs> South Dakota. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sorry, that's awesome. But to what I want to talk about today is, do you remember me talking about embarrassing moments? I want to, I want to share another one that I heard. Um, I thought we had um, ski hills or mountains in Wisconsin until I went to Colorado. We have speed bumps. <laughs> All right, but I remember my first time skiing. I mean, do you remember your first time skiing? How many of you skied? All right, you remember your first time? I, I don't know about you, but I had to start on the bunny hill, and you know, you're trying to learn how to turn, but first they'd say, do the wedge, do the wedge. I was getting bummed, like, give you the wedgie. I'm sorry, okay. But I'm like, do the wedge. And so they're learning, but I want to tell you the story about this one girl, because she was falling even on the, on the bunny hill, and she said, I finally got it down, but she had bought a, a new ski outfit to look good. She said, but it takes a long time. So it took about an hour to get all the, the stuff on, the boots, and then you got to walk like this to get your skis, and you get going. I got to the bunny hill, and I finally learned how to snow plow a little bit, do the wedge, and to turn a little bit. She said, now it was my time to hit the slopes. I said, so I don't know if you're the first time getting on that ski lift, you're sitting around, and it comes, and it hits you in the backside. She said, but I made it on. <laughs> my friend didn't. <laughs> but it got up to the top for the first time, and... She said that hill was so high and so steep, but <clears throat> she worked up all of her courage and she went for it. And, you know, she learned to go back and forth and do the wedge and she made it down. And she's like, without falling, she said, it was awesome. I fell in love with it. So I, I went again and again. I said, but then I came down and I had to go to the bathroom. She said, but I'm like, it's going to take an hour to get all this stuff off to go. So I'm, I'm just going to go one more time. But this time on the way up, the ski lift stop. <laughs> so there she is on the tear lift. She's like, <laughs> she's like, what do you do? You can't cross your legs with these skis on. She said, I'm holding, holding. I finally get to the top. She finally starts up. She gets to the top. She said, she said, I looked at my friend and said, I can't make it to the bottom. I can't make it. What do you think I should do? And her friend said, Oh, why don't you just go over in the woods? <laughs> she said, Really? He said, Yeah, here. I'll hold your ski poles and your gloves. Give her the ski pole and the gloves. And she goes, I don't know how to tell you that. She goes over to the woods. She said, Bob, it's a little easier for you guys to go in the woods than us girls. She said, well, yeah, I gotta take everything down and put it down to my ankles. And then I gotta bend down and I gotta go back. She said, because if I don't, you know what I mean. <laughs> so she said, I'm going, 
I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going down and I'm going back. And she says, all of my skis go, woo! She goes, I start flying down the hill with my pants down and my neck is like, ah! She said, I can't turn, I can't budge. I'm just picking up speed, I'm screaming. And she said, people are staring. She said, but there was a jump. And she hit this hill and she went up and she came and and she said, I landed on my, on my knee and it just shattered me. And she said, I'm laying there going, ah, and people are coming and like, how do you know? And she's like, get the, get the ski patrol, get the ski patrol. She said, but I'm laying there. And she said, it's jelly. <laughs> but people are coming and coming and they, they gotta be careful because her leg, her leg is literally broken and they can't get up right away. They finally, they get it up and she, they, they get her in the, in the sled and they, with snowmobile, and they pull her over and get her to the ambulance, get her to the hospital. She's in the ER. She's in the room and she's finally calmed up a little bit. And the doctor comes in and says, you know, are you okay? Yeah. And the doctor's laughing and laughing. And she looks at the doctor and goes, it's not funny. It's not funny. And, and the doctor goes, what's not funny? Well, you no, he said, I'm not laughing at you. Well, then why are you laughing? Doctor said, you're not going to believe this. But uh, there's a guy in the next room. He was at the ski hill, and he saw this girl coming on the hill <laughs> with her pants down. And he started staring at her, and he ran into a tree. <laughs> and the girl's like, damn it, man. <laughs> He had no idea what happened to her. Didn't even know it. You can't make that kind of stuff up. I, I collect these all over again. I'd love to hear one of yours. But one of the places we could get them is we used to do just one assembly program in a day. And then we'd stay and train the peer facilitators, peer leaders. But today afterwards, we're going to... Yeah, we're going there. <laughs> and so a lot of times we'd have 10 people sitting in a circle. Everybody would go around and share their most embarrassing moment. Sit and laugh and have a good time. Until afterwards, we're not saying. Not everybody's gone. Is there maybe another most embarrassing moment you didn't share with the whole group? And I was single, single time in the book. <laughs> I'm like, come on, tell it, put in my new book. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, right? Why not? They said, Bob, for me, it's not the most embarrassing moment. But I'm embarrassed by who I am as a person. So I started asking a question. People might say, if there was anything about you that you could change, would you? If there's anything about you, would you change something? Nine out of 10 people, nine out of 10 people said yes. If I could change something about me, I would. You know that one person out of 10 who said, no, I don't think I would change anything. You know what the funny thing was? All their friends wish they would change. <laughs> it's kind of pretty, a person that would drown on a rainy day because their nose are stuck up in the air. We call them stuck up or arrogant or snobs. But I thought there's got to be a balance. Somebody way over here who thinks the whole world revolves around them and somebody over here who doesn't think they have anything to share with society, not even their own little group of friends. So I started asking another question. I said, well, what would you change about yourself? Now, I know we got high school students here, but these are real answers I got from little all the way to older people. I said, what would you change? Some people said stuff like, my nose. I'm like, why your nose? He said, my nose is so long, people thought it was a ski slope. Or my chin. I'm like, your chin? <laughs> really? They said, yeah. Well, the, their nose, they thought it was Pinocchio. Their chin, they thought it was a ski slope. If that's true, I have two or three hills right here. <laughs> people who are short wish that they were taller. People who are tall wish that they were shorter. People have straight hair they get curled. People have curly hair, they get it straightened. People have dark hair, they get it lightened. People have light hair, they get it darkened. People who tan good, lay out all summer and get cancer. <laughs> <laughs> now we have cancer machines for the winter, but I hate it. Why? I go in the sun, I walk in the sun, and I get, the sun goes, and I get these dots called freckles. Now my mom, trying to help my self-image when I grew up, used to say to me, Bah, those aren't freckles. Those are angel kisses. 
Oh, why didn't I think of that? Next time somebody was mean in school and said, hey, Freckles, you're ugly. I just looked at him and said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't freckles, dude. Those are, <laughs> those are angel kisses. Come on, give me a break, right? I mean, I, I, want, I want to talk. I never wanted to be a speaker, first of all, but I never wanted to be a motivational speaker. If you know any reruns, I live by down by the river in the back of my van, right? <laughs> you are right. right. And I never, especially on the area of self-worth, on dating, like, I never want to be one of those speakers that came to my school like this. This is not me. This is not me. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Today I want to talk about self-esteem and how you can feel good about you. Even you. Oh, <laughs> sorry, you. All you gotta do is every morning when you wake up, the first thing you do is you go in to look in the mirror. Time out. In my book, that's mistake number one. I don't know what you look like when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> but the last place I want to look is in the mirror. So no, you look at yourself and you see yourself five times. Not four, not three, not two, not one. But five times you look at yourself and you say, I was a gosh. <laughs> I am special. I am special. I am special. I am special. <laughs> Isn't that special? <laughs> Give me a break. I believe that everybody has dignity worthwhile, that they're special. But you know what? I played high school football, right? I was a star. Our team went four years in a row without losing the game, and I started. But the guard next to me, Tom Hermes, six foot tall, 200 pounds, captain of the team. If I missed my block and Hermes said, Lance, you're a loser. <laughs> what was I going to say? I, I'm not a loser. I am special. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want every person to know this. I can't find a talk that will take me your problems. I can't talk, take, find a talk that will take me your pain. And I can't take, find the talk to take away the past. But you don't have to let your problems, your pain, or your past take away your choices. And there's somehow we've got to find an unshakable self-identity, a self unshakable dignity, because will more hard times come in your life? Yes. But can we make it through? Yes. The way I want to do this is I want to make sure, where's the football? Who's on a football team? Raise your hand. Okay. Um, Biggest guy in the football team would probably be who? Alex. That's you? Alex. What was your name again? Alex. Alex, you know, I want to do a little... I, I want to have a little competition here, okay? <laughs> Alex, we're going to play this game, and if you beat me, I will buy all the pizza, the whole school, middle school to high school can eat, and all the soda you can drink. Cool? Don't lie. Come on, come on, okay? Brothers. <laughs> Screw them. Don't do it. Okay. You gotta grow both ways to be like me. Okay. But here's the thing. If I beat you, you have to buy, buy me a diet coke. Okay? Okay. I can hear some of your thoughts. Bob, you need a diet coke. <laughs> All right. So you put you come over here. <laughs> Anybody wants to play checkers later? On his shoes. <laughs> cool. Put your hands up like this. The name of the game is called Slap. What you gotta do is get the guy to move his foot like that, but we won't count that because Alex will know how to play, okay? You can hit any time, all right? Go ahead. Okay. If he falls forward like that, that'd be too nothing, but Alex will know how to play, so we won't count, we won't count that, all right? Now, um, we can play it, you know, whatever. Right? But if the first person gets the other person to move three times, right, we'll lose, right? All right. Right? Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> wasn't supposed to learn that quick. <laughs> John and Road Team, do we have some money? <laughs> One zero. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> Don't kiss me. <laughs> ah! Two zero. Okay, one more. Be a diet coke. <laughs> so before I leave, all right. Ah, uh, now, just a minute. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to take that long. You learned way too fast. I actually did lose once, um, and it was to a small guy because he knew the technique. See, I don't think it's just fair for a guy who has a good anchor like me <laughs> to be able to have an unshakable self-image. Every single one of us has dignity. Every single one of us should be able to have the power. The the um the resources and the connections to make it through anything that's in our life. But everywhere I go, people want to change. You know, like the new craze is this, <clears throat> how to lose 50 pounds or more in two days or less. <laughs> I need whatever you want. Just take this little pill. <laughs> Axel, <Excellent>. Axel. <laughs> you know, I, I gotta do something after that joke because it's sorry that the number of people with anorexia or believe me, there are people that actually do stuff like that to try to lose weight. But now the new craze is to be bigger, faster, stronger. So the new craze is for the drug called steroids. I wish I could say it never worked, but I saw in a Sports Illustrated, a sports magazine, it wasn't, I, not, okay, a sports magazine. <laughs> and on the cover was a picture of this scrawny little guy who said this, I always wanted to be a football player and get the girls that a football player could get, but it was impossible until steroids. Then he just saw the next picture. He was built. He had arms like this and a neck. He had a big chest. I used to have a big chest. It just fell. <laughs> so his chest was in the right spot and he had his football jersey on. And sure enough, there was girls all around him. But also on that chest were letters and pictures and flowers. You see, because he was in a casket, a death reported to steroids. You may think that obituary should have read, cause of death, drugs. Mark another friend gone forever because of the abuse of drugs. And let's not just get on drugs we may not see every day. More people are still dying of alcohol than any other drugs put together. But then also, we've got to be careful this opiates, the pain medicines and, and the heroin that's going on, and it's so accessible right now. So make sure we fight it. But I think the obituary should have read this. <clears throat> Cause of death, drugs. Reason, low self-identity. See, he thought he had to be like somebody else to feel good about himself. He thought he had to be in a certain, certain sport to feel good about himself. He thought he had to be like somebody else instead of just being who he was. And so what I'm here today is to this. I'm asking you, would you fight against society system, okay? What society says you need to be, have, or do to feel good about you. Fight against society system, what society says you have to be, have, or do. I want you to say it with me. Fight against society system, what society says you need to be, have, or do. Be, have, or do to feel good about you for three reasons. Number one, it's not working. Nine out of ten people want to change something about themselves, and the other person probably should. Every single day, every single day, there's 1,800 attempts of suicide. People are crying out. People are struggling with anxiety and depression. We don't even want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. It's okay. Because, like, if my brother would have died of cancer, right, I wouldn't have felt bad. But do I still want to give to cancer research? Do I still want to prevent cancer, yes or no? Yes. yes. Are we going to stop all cancers? No. Are we going to stop fighting against cancer? No. No. Then let's have that same attitude towards anxiety and depression, whether it's episodic or whether it's just a decision. No matter what, it's okay to talk. But a fight against it for three reasons. Number one, it's not working. Nine out of ten people want to change something about themselves. Number two, it's not fair. I'm going to draw you a bell. 
I'm going to tell you it's a bell, in case you can't tell. <clears throat> I never got an A in art class. He asked us an artist last night. I'm like, no, I never, matter of fact, I never got a B in art class. I, I never got a C in art class. I flunked art. How do you flunk creativity, okay? But I'm going to draw a bell, and I want this bell to represent society's system for determining self-worth, all right? So here we go. You were laughing. That's how I flunked art. Give me a round of applause, all right? Let's say this bell represents society. If that's true, there's 10% of society right here. We call this 10% gifted. If a guy is seven feet tall in America, what do we assume he's gifted in? Basketball. Basketball. We say, see the hole, see the ball, put the ball in the hole. And be able to go, oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, slam dunk, thousands of people go crazy. Yeah! I don't know if he got so excited. The guy's so tall, he put the ball in his mouth and slam dunk it. <laughs> when I was in high school, they say I was gifted in football. The coach would say, Bob, see the guy with the ball? Yeah. Quarterback. Oh. See the guy with the other color? Color? <laughs> he went to try to kill guy with ball. Interesting. <laughs> you stop him. I say, how? No, it's not, a, if you don't play ball, it's not as easy as you think. Coach says, stand in his way. <laughs> Call blocking. Hey, they're paying people millions of dollars to do this in the NFL. So, am I against football? Am I against basketball? No. If you're gifted there, live it to your full potential drug and alcohol free. But what I don't think is fair is just because a guy is seven feet tall and I'm seven feet wide that we can be called gifted. Here's why. If this 10% is gifted, then there's another 10% in society. And if we call this 10% gifted, then this 10% would have to call handicapped. Well, just as unique, just as much as the individual, but we say these people will have value, and then 80% of us in the middle who are just average, or a bad word nowadays called normal. And we base our identity on what I call a bunch of P's. Physical appearance, what do you look like? Popularity, who you in with, right? Performance, how good are you? Possessions, what kind of money you have? What kind of car, what kind of home? Power, who do you influence? When we start doing all, the, all these things on the outside, are those bad in themselves? No. But when we start saying that these people have more value than other people, then we set up a problem where a lot of people don't know that they have dignity. Here's why. I have a friend over in this position. Not only is she a friend, but she's my sister. I talked about my brother Tim who passed away last time I was here. But I have another sibling with special needs, it's my sister Lois. Lois is older than I am, but if she's at about third grade level, you say shut up in our house, you'd hear Lois go, oh, that's not kind. So we had to show her the difference between real bullying and having fun, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, come on, cause I'm, I mean, here I, I run an anti-bullying program, but I'm one of the most sarcastic people I know. So we had a brainwash, we go, Lois, why do we pick on you? She goes, because you, because you love me. There's a difference from having fun and then making fun. Is there real bullying? Yes. When you use words or actions to hurt somebody, they ask you to stop and you continue, that has to stop. But one of my most embarrassing moments came with my sister. See, I went to a, a Christian um, middle school, and then a high school I had to join the public school. And so when I got into high school, I wanted to get in with the, the, the guys who went to the other middle school, the popular guys. And so I took a couple guys up to our cottage. We live on a natural lake in Wisconsin. We got a boat, our, we have a cottage there, and we have a boat. So I brought a couple guys out, and we went water skiing, we went fishing. And they were sitting around playing some cards around the picnic table, but they had never met my family before. And while we were out fishing, they must have came. And while we were playing cards, they almost came out of the cottage. And she was doing something that was embarrassing. 
So I put up my hand to get her to stop, but her retardation has affected her eyesight and glasses can't reverse it. So she never saw me. And so she's kind of walking up to my friends. So what she was doing is over the top of her head, her nose, and her mouth. She's wearing an athletic supporter. She's wearing a guy's jock over her face. And she comes up to my friends and goes, hey guys, you want to play a doctor? And my friends looked at me as weird as some of you are looking at me right now. <clears throat> and they looked at me and they said, Bob, who is this? And I said, it must be some neighbor girl that my mom is taking care of. And my own sister, my own flesh and blood. I was embarrassed of. Why? I didn't have enough courage to stand up against society's system. What society says we need to be, have, or yeah. to feel good about you. But that's one of the reasons I'm here today. In, in my book, Digging Revolution, I know we have it in the school. I think it's chapter four, it's called T4. Hitler, anybody here think Hitler was right? But Hitler, before he even wiped out all the, all the, um, the Jewish people, wiped out Hitler. Look up the, the phrase T4. T4 stands for Tijagam Strauss 4. It's an address. And you, if you type in today on a, a website, you go T4 Hitler. It was a euthanasia program that comes up of people that they did experiments on. They would cut off a leg and arm in the name of science and switch and see what happened. Put them under water until they drowned and see what happened. And freeze it until they froze to death and air until their eyes popped out. And when they brought the people to court, for murder, they said you can't kill somebody than less than human. Less than human. Because they didn't meet up to the standard. If you do T4, it actually said this life not worthy of life. Let me ask you, is there any life not worthy of life? No. You know who they wiped out? The elderly, the handicapped, the mentally ill, the gypsy, the homosexual, the Christian. They made a list and said, Could you? I mean, then Hitler did what? Let's wipe out the Jews, why? I mean, the, the perfect race was what? Blonde hair and? Blue what color hair did he have? What color, how did he pull this off? That's how stupid, that's how idiotic. We have to stand up for the value of every single people, person, even the people that we are different from, disagree with, every person has value. And we have to bring that culture back to have a revolution. And when you look at the word revolution, it's R-E-V-O-L, go backwards from there, L-O-V-E. It's really gonna be love that really makes a difference. And here's where I wanna end. My sister Lois has taught me that every single person has value. My mom works at, my mom used to work at 24 hour hotline and we got nine to 10 calls a day and then she get the needs and call organizations, get help. You just got to call on time. What? Your husband lost his job? They broke the union, there's no unemployment? Welfare can't help to when? You have five kids and have no food left? That's awesome, that's awful. Lois heard my mom as she was repeating this. Lois just starts to cry. She's like, that's not fair. They don't got any food, that's not fair. But also she got an idea. And when Lois gets an idea, she gets excited. And when she gets excited, she gets spastic. So she's like, <laughs> so they can half cry, half laugh. <laughs> and she starts running. And we're like, there goes Lois. But she ran to her bedroom and she grabbed the envelope and she came back and she goes, here, mom, give this to him. This will feed him for a long time. See, in that envelope was a check for 40 hours of her life. She works at the Shelter Activity Center in Appleton for the handicapped. And in that envelope was a check for 40 hours of her life. And she was willing to give the whole thing to help somebody else. But can I tell you how much that check was worth? See, she gets paid by another P called Peace Count. How much you put out, how much you perform. So for 40 hours of her life, she got a check for one dollar and 19 cents. Not even enough, not even enough to buy a burger on the wrong day. 
but she gave everything to help somebody else. If you are not willing to go and tell, anybody here willing to go tell my sister that she's not gifted? Lois, you're not beautiful. You're not rich. You're not that athletic. Lord, you, Lois, you're not really popular. You never had a boyfriend. Lois, matter of fact, you're not even normal. Lois, you are just luggage. And if we get too much luggage, just like when I fly, you get first class if you have money. You get second class. Oh, they call it coach class because second class doesn't sound. And then they throw luggage underneath. If you don't have enough money, it'll have to be eliminated. Anybody here willing to say, Lois, you're not gifted, you're just luggage to be eliminated. Anybody? I asked, we were just out of school last year in Michigan, and somebody said their hand, raised their hand and said yes, that they thought that Lois didn't have any value. If you're not willing to do that, then I want to ask you one more time in closing. If you're not willing to do that, then will you fight against society system for determining self-worth? Why? Three reasons. Number one, it's not working. Number two, it's not fair. They say some people are gifted because of what's on the outside, and other people are just luggage. But if you look at that even in my own world, my favorite football team, the Green Bay Packers, I've gotten to use some chapels for them, got to meet Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I know what a signing bonus is. But do I really believe in the context of real life that my sister Lois has just as much value? I would say yes, because Lois has taught me this. It's L-O-V-E, love. See, the old system says one person can be the best. The new system says this. Every person can be their best. So here's what I'd like to do in closing. Number one, fight against society since we determine self-worth, because it's not working. Number two, it's not fair. And if, and yet, if we're honest, how many of us base our identity on popularity, on physical appearance, on performance, on profession, on possessions? This system, the old system, is controlling us. If we really want a dignity revolution, then love has to control us instead. And I'll close with this story. Because of my sister, we help out a lot with Special Olympics. And they're, this will show you as well because they still were in metrics. They're running a 440 one time around the track. And these guys, the most, we, were, we were in the audience, but their guys are lined up and they're all, hey, mom, hey, dad. But they take it so serious. On your mark, get set, go. The one guy went off in front, another guy in second, but the guy I want to talk about was in second last place. Second last place, but going around the first corner, something went off inside of him and he just went, yeah! Usually at a race, everybody's watching the guy in first place. Everybody's eyes came off the guy in first place, went to the guy in second last. Whatever he did, it started working. He passed up one guy, another guy, another guy. By the time he got to the next corner, there's only two people in front of him. The guy in first <coughs> and the guy in second. But all of a sudden, he gave it one more time. He's like, Aah! he passed up the guy. Now he's in second place. Now the audience is on their feet. They're going, go, go, run, run. He gives it one more time. Aah! And he passes up the guy in front, first place. And the finish line is his. And he's going. But about 10 feet away, he trips. And because of his handicap, he's not quick enough to put out his hands. So down he goes. And there's cuts and instant scratches and blood. And the guy who had fallen back in the second place had regained the lead and the finish line was his. But without hesitating, he stopped and said, are you okay? And helped him up. And everybody else passed him up and won the race. And the guy who could have passed him and, and won lost the race. Or did he? Or in losing, did he win? And being last, was he first? I can't make that decision for you, but that's what my hope is. Because there's something more important than just that finish line, and that's love. And when you love, every person reaches their potential. Every person knows their purpose. Every person knows their dignity. Fight against society system for determining self-worth. It doesn't work. It's not fair but it's been controlling us. You like somebody else making your decisions for you? 
than rebel against the system and stand up for this revolution that's based on love, that says that every single person has value. Every single person can have the courage to do what's right and then respect yourself and others. On behalf of Tom, the road team, it's so good to be back here again. Let's live, well, go to saydignitypledge.com. Say that dignitypledge.com. Dignitypledge.com. I'm asking you today to go and take the pledge. If you have a story, we'd love to hear your story. But please go. There's 75,000 people that take the pledge. We should go and be a part of the Dignity Revolution. Thank you very much. Have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you. And give it up for Bob one more time. And, uh, Bob doesn't do this by himself. He's got an awesome road team with him. So over there we got Lucas, John, and Chuck. Why don't you give it up for Lucas, John, and Chuck? <laughs> Bob said pretty much everything we wanted you guys to hear today. Um, we really want to see a dignity revolution, and I know we're, we're fighting the system that uh, says something totally different. What society has sold us isn't working, and we're trying to go against that, and that's not always easy, but it can be done. Uh, Silas, come here a minute. Silas, I didn't ask you before to be my volunteer, but uh, I appreciate your willingness, right? Uh, what society says right now is that we should all be the same, right? We should all look this way, be this way. We should all have this. Do we want everybody to look like Silas? No. It'd be kind of weird if we all were the same, right? But that's what society says we want. They don't want to celebrate differences. They want, don't want to celebrate individualism at all. We will all want to be the same, act the same, whatever else. But the reality is, is that we're all different, right? So at some point we have to be able to celebrate differences. It's not something we should make fun of. It's not something to laugh at, to be embarrassed about, that you're different. That's what makes us great, is that we aren't all the same, that we all have differences. We should celebrate that. But that's not easy, right? How many ever, like, see, old paintings like Mona Lisa and some of these great paintings, right? You ever see a painting that some artist goes and does and it's one of a kind? There's one in the world. And they go and they try to say how much this painting's worth. What do they call that? They say it's what? Priceless. Priceless, right? There's no way you can put a price on it. Why? Because there's only one of them. There is one in the world. There's only one of you. There's not two of you. There's not three of you then why in society today do our young people feel worthless? There's only one of you. There's no duplicate. You should feel priceless. Why? Because people are always there beating you down, saying something against you. Our goal as a school is to hopefully be able to say, thanks Silas, for sure, that everybody has value and everybody deserves respect. You are all priceless individuals. Every person, doesn't matter how big you are, how tall you are, how short you are, if you struggle in school, if you're good in school, if you're athletic, if you're not. Everybody has value. Everybody is priceless. Everybody's different. That's okay. I'm different. I'll admit it. Right? But you got to be rock solid base. I'm okay with who I am. And if you're not okay, talk to somebody. Be there for somebody. Support each other. You got to have a support group. So, will you guys pledge to uh, help us have a dignity revolution? Will you help us out with that? Seventh graders, how about you? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Awesome. Eighth graders, where you at? Yeah? Freshman? Where you at, freshman? All right. Well, that was pretty weak. Sophomores? Yeah. yeah. Juniors? Yeah. Seniors? Yeah. All right, hey. Seniors, what legacy will you leave behind? This is your last year here. Make it a great one. All right? Pave the way for the juniors to have an awesome year next year. Okay? All right. Hey, Mr. Nelson, I'm going to turn it over to him. 
He's going to tell you what you guys need to do.